What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Goats and Unicorns YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a very special interview that I did with one of my brand new students who's been in our program for less than 30 days and just closed his first flat fee lead generation deal. His name's Tony, he's been working his butt off and he just followed our system step by step. So for any of you naysayers or wonderers if, if this stuff actually works, go ahead and take Tony's word for it, listen to what he says. And with that, I'll see you in the interview. I'm on my way to go quit my job right now. Uh, well, yeah, dude, so I like to do these like interviews with people um, and kind of just, you know, talk about how the deal went down, um, you know, and uh, all that good stuff and just get all those good details for, you know, to get other people hyped up and excited. And um, yeah, so I want to dive into it. So uh, you just closed the deal, right? First, first deal, first site. How many sites total do you have? Is it just one published? So uh, at first I had one site. Okay. After I closed this deal, I got so excited that I was like, I got to get my next site out. Like, yeah. 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 So now I have two and okay. I'm thinking like, how can I 10 X this from here is really yeah. where my head's at. So uh, yeah. answer your question. I, I have two sites now. Okay, cool. Awesome. And uh, the first one, um, you don't have to tell us the area, but I was curious, what is the niche that you sold that first deal in? Yeah. So the niche was solar panels, okay. which, um, it's funny after I made it, I'm thinking, I'm like, man, this was stupid. Why didn't I just do landscape design? I could have just followed Zach and did everything <laughs> to a T the way he did it. Right. Um, but I'm really grateful actually that I did do solar panels because the ticket prices for some of those jobs, as I'm sure you know, yep. uh, is, is pretty attractive. Yeah, absolutely. So what made you choose solar? I'm just curious, cause that's, I have a background in solar. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so literally, I remember when we were, I was looking through the ClickUp, the template uh -huh. that you put together. Yeah. And it, it kind of listed like a few niches for each of the different categories. If it was like low, medium or high. And the one that jumped out to me was solar because it was on yeah. like the high ticket price. Right, right. And so like, I'm, thinking, I was, I'm like, well, like, and my background is not in like anything tech related. I'm, my background is in sales and relationship management. So I'm like, Okay. If I can't figure out this whole SEO thing and I'm not getting a ton of leads, uh -huh. at least I'll have a high ticket price yeah. service. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So so you have no no solar experience. It, it, it was just total just inspiration. You're just like, let's go. Let's roll with it. Totally. That's uh, cool. Zero solar experience. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's awesome, man. Well, that's super cool. Um, so tell me a little bit about the deal and then um i want to dive in a little bit more to kind of what you said about what you currently do and and kind of your uh you know your your interest in the entrepreneurial ventures and all that kind of stuff so um yeah tell me a little bit more how, like how did the deal go down so like did you do the suggested method where it's like lead comes in you pass off the lead or did you just call and start finding somebody right away that where you're like hey if i could get you some leads would you like like walk me through kind of how that process went if you followed the process to a t that i teach that's cool but um sometimes people kind of put together their own process and stuff so i'm just curious and then like how the conversation went with the business owner and that whole interaction and stuff because that's what you know obviously i'm going to be showing this to people that kind of get that anxiety right that like all of us get at the very beginning when we're like oh my gosh and so we want to see other people you know that that have done it and and everything so i want to i want to hear a little bit more about how that that all went down yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. So the short answer is I followed your blueprint to a T as okay. best I could. Awesome. I built the site, probably like a month went by, didn't hear anything. So I was like, all right, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. And um, I was actually driving back. My wife and I went to a Keith Urban concert the night, okay. the day after I'm driving back and I get a phone call and it's from my website and it's a real lead. Nice. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, like, let's, let's <laughs> lock in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, yeah, he's like, this is you know, my name. And like, this is, I'm looking for removal and reinstallation. Like, I saw that you guys do this. And so I'm like, giddy up, like, let's go. Yeah, so I yeah. take down all his information. 
Um, literally went through, like I had your script in the back of my mind of like, hey, my estimator's out doing another bid right now. As soon as they get back, I'll have to contact you, come out, meet you, and give you a quote. And so at that point, I'm like, all right, now I got to find some. So I literally get back home. I go on um, Thumbtack, Angie's List, and I just start calling people. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, after a few calls, I was able to find a, a local business owner who has a solar panel company. Yeah. Um, and this guy, he had, it's like a owner operator type of business. I think he has like two employees. So I was able yeah. to get in contact with him directly, which I think is important. Like you want to be able to actually talk to the business owner. Oh, 100%. <laughs> right? Like not just like a uh, assistant like a or whatever. Receptionist or executive yeah. assistant, stuff like that. Yeah. So I explained to him, I'm like, hey man, like I explained him the whole deal. I have an online website directory um, that's designed for solar panels. I have this referral are you interested? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, all right, so like, here's the deal. And I'm like, number one, I want you to take really good care of this customer. Yep. And then if you, uh, and I said, um, what I'd like to do over the next month is all of the leads in my, or all the referrals that my website generates yep. sent to you directly. Yeah. And if at the end of that month, you like the way things are going, we could talk about a win-win partnership. He was like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's kind of how it started. That's awesome, man. That's great. I mean, literally just sounds like textbook, like literally just straight yeah. out of the textbook of the training, followed the scripts verbatim. And honestly, man, I mean, as much as, you know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll warn you that it doesn't always happen that way. But, you know, the outcomes oftentimes, you know, come, but Sometimes there's just, you know, all sorts of pivoting that you have to do, but it literally sounds like your deal was just like exactly textbook, exactly how we write it up. And a lot of them do happen that way, right? But not all of them, um, you know, happen just so, you know, perfect in a way, right? But um, so then I, I'm curious, so then you, so you start the lead trial, he accepts, right? And he's like, yeah, sounds great. And then what happened with the site after that? Like, did it get more calls? And then how did you set up the closing call with the business owner? Because I know you posted in the group uh, earlier, or, or it was like a day before or earlier before you were going to go pitch him. And you're like, hey, like start, you know, sending some good vibes my way type of a deal. So <laughs> I'm curious how that whole thing transpired. Yeah. So after I got him on board for the free lead trial month, I got kind of nervous. because I was like, what if my website doesn't generate any leads over the next month? And I come oh. back and I try to ask him for money. He's like, dude. Yeah. No, <laughs> I didn't get anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's the biggest fear. <laughs> but thankfully, um, two things happened from there. Number one, the first lead that I sent him was a removal and reinstall for 47 solar panels. Oh, which at the time deal. that's a massive deal like coming from i before i broke off and did you know this full time um i was i was vp of marketing and sales for a solar company so like i know that that is a huge deal <laughs> and at the time i didn't realize it and then i started to do some research and i'm like wait a minute here this is like a 10k plus job oh that oh you know, that thing was probably 47 panels Dude, I'm talking that thing's probably like a sixty to seventy thousand dollar job. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'm I'm way undershooting that. Thing. Well, now when I say that's that's for labor, uh, you know, materials and all that kind of stuff. So so probably over ten k uh, gross profit for the company after materials, labor, and all of your hard really? costs, right? Yeah. So probably around ten k for that, um, and then but yeah, like. Yeah, a, a typical solar job that at least we were selling back in the day uh, when I was, you know, this is years ago, but it was about 30, 40 grand per home. Not for not for installation, just removing well, and reinstalling. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, that might be that might be different. It depends on if they if they were were they just removing it for like getting a roof done and then reinstalling the same panels yes oh okay then okay then yeah forget what i just said i thought you yeah. were talking about a completely brand new system no like, no okay okay so yeah your, your your numbers are probably closer to to where it was at but a 47 panel brand new job yeah probably about 60 70k but yeah so so keep going sorry i don't yeah, know no, I keep so, out uh, with the solar stuff <laughs> yeah no it, it's all good so I, I i anyway i started to do some research 
national average for removal reinstall is like 4,400, assuming you have 15 to 20 panels. Again, yeah. this guy, 50. So I'm thinking like 10K gross, he probably netted like 3K ish. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so I think that really helped me build a lot of credibility, giving him a job like that for free right off the bat. And the business owner closed the deal, right? And the business owner closed the deal. Yeah, which is huge, um, which is huge because anytime you're making a money. I mean, it's almost like an automatic. So like the, the equity was built immediately. And I think that helped me like tremendously Big time. from there. Uh, I think over the course of the next month, that free month, there was a total of four leads that were generated either through email or call. Nice. Most of them were removal and reinstalls. Okay. Uh, cool. Just kind of happens to be the way my website is ranking. It's ranking really high for that. Nice, uh, nice. So that's one of your sub kind of like keywords that you're targeting. And so that's what's generating a lot of the traffic. And I think there's less, from what I'm learning, I think there's less competition for that versus solar panel installation. I would imagine, yeah, yeah. So uh, so anyway, got him another four leads over the course of that month. Um, right. May have closed like another one of them. So call yeah. two out of four. Yeah. And that was kind of how the free lead trial month went. Awesome. And then how did you go about approaching? Cause I know this is a question that we all get. I answer it all the time in whether it's DMS or calls or whatever. Um, but how did you particularly go about it? And maybe you just did exactly the same way that I teach you guys, but, um, getting him back on the phone to say, Hey, like, you, you know, and kind of initiate that conversation as far as the, Hey, like now that we've kind of had this little, you know, back and forth lead trial, you know, what do you, what do you say, uh, we get on the phone call and talk about a win-win partnership. I am curious how you phrased it and, and how that interaction went. Yeah. So basically just like that, I had a reminder on my phone that after the third week of the free month that I was going to reach back out to him to set up the zoom call for the, for the close. Yeah. And so I did, uh, and I think we ended up meeting like three or four days before the did end you of the call month. or did you text? To set the to set the appointment for yourself. To set the appointment, I emailed him. Emailed him. Okay, cool. Because we we had been communicating back and forth in email, so I was just checking in, like, "Hey, did you close? Like, how did it go?" And yeah, yeah. you know, he was very responsive. So I was like, "All right, I'm just going to shoot him an email." Nice. Uh, I, I did that, and then we settled on a date. And then from there, um, again, like, not to sound repetitive, but like followed the script to a T yeah. as far as like asked him questions on the front end, like, where do you want to take your business? How would you like to spend your time? Like, what are you doing marketing wise? And like, you know, he had some answers, but like the reality is like, he's not really doing a whole lot. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, he, he did say the one thing of like, I would love to spend more time like finding jobs and not doing the work myself and kind yeah. of like, you know, subbing that out to my employees and yeah. focusing on re revenue generating activities. And I was like, yeah, great, yeah. I think we could be like a great partnership here. Yeah. Um, so I had that kind of all teed up. And then eventually for the close, I pulled up the tool yeah. and literally just walked him through like, hey man, like I'm not messing around. Like I have my numbers all right here. Yep. I had like the average for a removal and reinstall which for him, that happened to be all the leads that I sent him that month. Yeah. It was very personal to what I sent to him. Yeah, yeah. And I said, look, my website's generating five leads a month, which for him, it was like four. So, you know, pretty close. Yeah. Um, and then I just kind of Googled like, what is the average net profit margin for a solar panel company? And yeah. I happened to find like 25, 30%. So I just put in yep. 30%. Yep. Uh, and I did a 50% close rate. Nice. So, you know, I walked him through how I got all the numbers and eventually just closed him with, look, his name is Daviel. I was like, Daviel, if we were to work together on a go forward basis in a win-win partnership and I were to, and I kind of walked him through all the numbers again, yep. uh, on average, provide you with $3,300 in profit every month to your bottom line. Yep. Uh, and ask for $695 in return for that, would that be worth it to you? And what he said? Like, yes. And I, and I, after he said yes, I was like, ah, oh, man, I, I probably could have like raised the price a little bit. <laughs> 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 like, oh. 
Um, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, it was yeah. almost too easy of a yes. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was almost like I could have said like a thousand. He would have been like, yeah. So yeah, whatever. I, the, I was the cool I was thing. more concerned about like getting the deal and locking yeah. in recurring revenue, and then we could always work on like adjusting prices in the future. Exactly, man. Exactly, and um, and that's the cool thing too, right? Is is um, like from here on out now you can go and focus and making adjustments to the site ranking for more keywords you know doing whatever you want to you know can do to generate more leads for and, and capture more traffic and then you know like renegotiate down the road say hey man I, you know originally when we talked you know um you, you know this was the the case and stuff i mean now we're doing now we're doing 20 qualified leads over to you every month you know what do you say we we, we raise this to 1200 or 1500 or whatever you know um I'm, I'm trying to put in the work to to make this more valuable and so i can get some more value in return as well you know and so i've done that a couple of times with people and they're always i mean i, I shouldn't say always some people are like ah you know because like the first the first inclination is just like oh this guy's trying to like take more money from me but you really got to go into it strategically but um and again if you show them like look man like without me like you'd be you, you, you wouldn't have any of this <laughs> you know what i mean you, like you wouldn't have any of the, all this good stuff that's happened and and then oh. um and then they're usually like you know hey yeah that, that's fair man like um so that's the nice thing too is like you got the deal under your belt because the worst thing would have been is like what if you said a thousand all of a sudden now they're just he's like ooh, like that's a little bit high but because you were just like hey 700 bucks 695 or however you priced it he was just like yeah like that's you know awesome and so yeah. you the, the point is you close the deal you got some recurring money coming in every month for it and uh now it's like you said off to the races man 10x 10x 20x 30x from here you know so i'm curious you know what is i guess kind of your you know goals right like are is this more of like um you know additional income right um is this like you've always kind of had the entrepreneurial itch and you're just looking to scratch it um or yeah i'm curious to know because all of us kind of have different visions i've i've coached students that want to make a couple hundred extra dollars a month i've met people who are like i got to get out of a job some people are like dude i love my job i just want to make you know a little bit more money to go travel or something you know um or whatever um or like start my own business and and know the marketing and lead gen side of things you know so i'm curious to hear kind of your motives and and whatnot yeah, it's a really interesting question. I, I kind of feel like I'm at a crossroads now where um, I've always done like, you know, the corporate job gig and, you know, 401k yeah. and all that's great. But like more and more nowadays, the people that I follow and that I listen to, the mentors, quote unquote, that I have are all entrepreneurs. Yeah. And so it's really getting me to rethink like one of my biggest goals personally is financial freedom. Yeah. And the more that I go on, the more that I realize, like, I think it's really going to have to be with entrepreneurship. Yeah. So I would say that I, th I started out as more of like, oh, a side hustle. Like, this is kind of interesting. Let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm like, whoa, like, if I can get 10 of these websites and let's just say they're all generating 700 a month, like that's an extra seven grand of income. Yeah. I would be able to fire my employer. And like yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, so that's it's an inter interesting that you asked that question because i feel like that's um kind of where i'm at today yeah that's cool man and yeah and that's the thing too like i said is everybody's journey is you know different like you know for me personally i was always uh you know when i was i, I got married super young and i started having kids super young so i actually dropped out of college so i don't have a fancy piece of paper that says i'm smart right <laughs> um wow. so I, uh, because yeah, when we started having kids right away, when we were in college, I was just like, uh, well, uh, I'm not going to be able to, you know, and, and maybe this was a bit of a limiting belief, but I just didn't think that I was going to be able to go through school, work a job, support a family, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, I got to go figure this thing out. I actually dove into a sales career and started learning everything I could about sales. Then I started kind of realizing, Hey, like, you know, not that I've mastered one-to-one -one selling. I'm, I'm okay at it, you know, maybe seven, eight out of 10. Um, but the real money that I've seen is in marketing. Like you can make, you know, millions of dollars as a salesperson as like top, 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 top tier salesperson as a decent or good, great marketer. Like you can literally build whatever the heck you want. Right. And wow. so for me having kind of big dreams and ambitions, I was just like, I got to figure out this whole marketing thing. So I started transitioning into more of that in the career still. Right. 
Um, and then eventually just built it up to the point where I was just like, hey, you know, um, and it's funny because people always ask me, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but uh, just figured, you know, for whoever's watching this and might be internalizing kind of their life and stuff. But um, people always ask me like, oh, what did it feel like when you went in and like quit your job, you know? And I was like, well, as much as like, you know, I loved the guys that I worked with, you know, like I, I, I did enjoy my life, but I just wasn't fulfilled personally being like even even like a high-ish executive in the company, right? Like a, a vice president. I was still just, no matter what, I knew that I wasn't gonna be fully, fully, fully happy until I was doing my own thing. But that's kind of like in my veins. Like I don't I don't necessarily suggest that for everybody. So that's why I ask those questions and, and get that point of view from other people as far as like, you know, kind of what is it that makes you tick and stuff. Cause you know, even as much as I tried to tell myself like, oh, you know, this is great. And I can, you know, carve out a, <clears throat> a great life and all this kind of stuff and maybe we'll sell the company someday and my equity will pay off and blah 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 i was just like oh man like i'm just really not fully gonna be and you know for me personally like ever since stepping out on my own scary first of all very scary but right. um like now i look back on it and i'm just like man i'm very grateful that i did to myself and i i actually kind of prolonged it probably longer than i should have as far as like waiting to quit you know what i mean but um and just the doors that have opened and all that kind of stuff, you know, um, and I know there's a lot of like cliche sayings I'm throwing out there right now, but literally it's just crazy how the cliches are right for, you know, they, they're cliche for a reason because you finally experience it yourself and you're like, holy cow, this is, this is the real deal, you know? So, um, yeah, that's awesome, man. I, it's so cool to see and talk to, to people when they close their first deal and, um, you know, kind of see that light bulb go off as far as like you said, where you're like, yeah, yeah, let's give this a shot. And then you like see it happen. And you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like it just kind of gives that new perspective, you know? Um, so anyway, that's super cool, man. Well, um, before we, uh, before we hop off, I mean, um, <clears throat> I just always like to ask is, you know, as, as a somewhat newish student, but now having some success and getting some momentum going, um, what do you, what, what words of wisdom do you have as someone brand new starting out? Um, whether it's in a program like this or just entrepreneurship in general, um, you know, any, any mindset stuff, any, um, organizational stuff you sat, you seem like a pretty organized dude. Like, you know, like you were saying, I, a couple of things I picked up on where you were saying, like, I set a, you know, I set a reminder on my phone to call the guy back at this time. You know, I did this, I did that. So, so, um, I'm curious to hear what tips, uh, you have for someone just starting out um in something along these lines of trying to become a bit of an entrepreneur or just make some additional income outside of a nine to five or whatever their reasons are um love to hear from from that yeah i would say just try it right yeah. like you don't know you don't know what you don't know yeah and so i kind of looked at it like all right this is an experiment i don't know if it's going to work maybe it doesn't yeah but if i don't try it i'll never know yeah and so you know, for me, to your point around organization, like I have to be because if I don't write something down, I'm not going to remember it. Yep. Um, so everything in my phone is like a reminder at a day at a certain time. And uh, yeah, like it's, it was kind of boring, I guess, but like I just followed the blueprint. Like, I just, <laughs> just like, followed <laughs> the steps because yeah. frankly, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I've yeah. never built a website before. Yep. Uh, the whole SEO thing was foreign to me. And I was like, all right, like this guy clearly knows what he's doing. Yeah. I'm just gonna follow what he what he says. Like, here's the blueprint. Yep. And um, yeah, I would say the biggest thing is I was just willing to give it a shot and you know, things worked out pretty well so far. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, and then last thing I'm curious on the sales side of things, because you do have a bit of a background in sales, was that still nerve wracking for you to call someone up? Because I know for me it was, even though I had been doing sales, but it was for whatever reason I thought like, oh, inside of a job, I'm trained, it's really easy to make sales calls. When I started doing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my own thing. I was super yeah. nervous. I'm curious to hear if you were or not, because that's obviously one of the big things that people sometimes let, they let that hold themselves back um as far as being you know anxious to to get on the phone and offer services yeah it was like no <laughs> doubt about it I, I remember like once i got the first qualified lead i was like oh my gosh like am i going to be able to actually find someone to take this lead yeah um, and thankfully i was but yeah it, it was definitely nerve-wracking like going through and trying to find 
who am I going to call? It's in a different state, different city. Like, yeah. I don't really know how accurate these like thumbtack listings even are really. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just, I just went for it. I do think having the sales and like the people skills, the relationship background definitely helped me when it came to the closing conversation and kind of how to deliver that, present everything. Um, but for sure, you know, it was nerve wracking trying to find that first business partner to work with. Yeah. Yeah. So for everybody listening, even when you have a ton of sales experience, it's still nerve wracking. And guess what? If you just follow it, it works, right? Uh, just wanted to throw that out there because I know a lot of people will be watching this from that angle of like, you know how sometimes like, and I don't know if you've ever felt like this. I, I mean, early on in my career, you know, this isn't the first side hustle or whatever side gig that I had tried my hand at before something actually worked. But um, you know how sometimes you're doing something and you're kind of always like, like maybe you buy a course or a program, something like this, and you're kind of looking for like the flaws so that you can give yourself the easy out of just like, oh, yeah. this doesn't work, you know? So I always like to point stuff out like that to people because I know how our brains work. I know how my brain works. And you got to just remember that like, you know, even to this day, guys, like I still get butterflies when I'm about to call a business owner. It's not like I'm just like, you know, calling people up and slinging deals left and right, right? It's still nerve wracking. I just, you know, stick to the you know the frameworks that i lay out and 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 use the the jargon that i teach you guys and everything like that and so i just want to point that out for those people who are you know definitely dreading that first call uh with a business owner and just you know coming from two guys who have a decent amount of sales and communication experience we still get nervous but you just push through and it's going to work. It's not going to, you're not going to close everybody too, you know, as you can attest to, right? Like everybody you call is not going to say yes. But I mean, with the product that we're selling, the fact that it is helping them generate extra revenue for their business, a little bit easier to have a transaction that way than maybe like, hey, purchase this product that, you know, you may or may not need or whatever, you know what I mean? So um just wanted to to point that out to people watching so well awesome uh, Tony. i appreciate you a ton man uh Zach, can i added one one last thing too yeah go ahead I say one of the things that my um business partner did say that was totally unique uh -huh. was the free lead trial month yeah so full disclosure like he had been on thumbtack i'm sure I don't know exactly how their business model works but i'm sure it's like credit Not card great file, for them <laughs> right yeah. yeah so he said to me um once we were getting to the end of the lead month and, and even after i did the close and the whole thing and like i started asking for money he's like he's like tony what you're doing like nobody else is doing so yeah. credit to you zach for kind of this whole process and system that you have in place because compared to angie's list or thumbtack or whoever else is out there like they're not doing it this way yep exactly exactly and that's huge man because yeah and and just so you do to touch on that real quick is like usually the way at least the way i understand the way thumbtack angie some of these guys do it is you know let's say you had seven solar guys and all of them are signed up to be a partner on thumbtack or whatever they're all paying for the leads that thumbtack generates right whether they close them or not but then it's off to the races for all seven to say whoever closes it closes it but Thumbtack's getting paid no matter what, the guys, the contractors might not. And so when we go strike up an exclusive partnership with people, you know, they're like, holy cow, you know, like this is a lot, a lot, you know, a lot more refreshing, right? And then the other positive thing is that because our websites are found on the search engine, that means the leads are coming to the search engine looking for the service. Um, which is very high intent, meaning like they're intending to do business with somebody. If they're going to Google and they're typing in, you know, solar panel reinstallation or takedown and reinstallation or whatever the keywords are that you're showing up for, um, that person's usually ready to go as opposed to maybe someone who's scrolling through um, Facebook or whatever and saying, do I need, you know, this or maybe I'll put in my information and see if I can just, you know, kind of window shopping, right? So the conversion rates are a lot higher. So those business owners, now you're giving them exclusive leads just to them only. And they're coming in in one of the hottest sources, not the hottest source, but I mean, one of the hottest sources, um, I guess it could potentially be the hottest source of leads 
uh, that you could ever have, really. Um, I, I would argue that maybe a referral of a, of a, of a friend or family would might be the more hot than that as far as like, now you've got that trust built in there. But um, again, one of the hottest sources of leads. So that's awesome, man. I mean, seriously, that's it's so awesome to, to hear these experiences. Um, every time somebody closes a deal, I always love to chat with them and pick their brain on how it went. Um, because I know having done the amount of deals that I've done at this point, that again, not all, not all two deals are going to be the same. And you'll find that out as you continue to close more deals, the, you know, they're kind of like a, a, a fingerprint where none of them are the same. Right. Um, uh, but, but they're always cool to hear the interactions that, that people have and everything. So I'm super looking forward to seeing you crush more deals. And when you start closing more deals, you know, we'll, we'll do more interviews and, and hear how those went as well. So, um, uh, I really, I really hope we can do that. Cause that means I have more deals and yeah, yeah. I, I look forward to it.